persons. So in the next seven minutes, I'll be talking on behalf of a huge, huge group and my collaborators about what we understand about tubercular posterior uveitis. We do understand that these tubercles are something we have known from the era of Duke Elder, that these are the classic presentations. Over a period of time, we realized there could be granulomas, there could be subretinal abscess, or there could be immune manifestations of TB in the eye in the form of serpiginous like choroiditis and TB vasculitis. Then started the confusion. The confusion was we did not know how to make the diagnosis. And because if you want to look at the direct evidence of TB, you are not going to get a smear or culture or histopathology from ocular samples. So how do you diagnose? You get montus, it comes positive. You get some x-ray which does not show active TB, but which does show lymph node and you refer it to your pulmonologist friend and he says this is not TB and you are not going to give anti-TB drugs. And there comes the whole confusion. So what do you do? The first thing is why do you need to do anti-TB because there is lot many times everybody says they respond to steroids, why add ATT? I would show you an example. This is a patient who came to us way back in 2004 when we were not so knowledgeable about tuberculosis. So we got the test done. Montus was positive. Chest showed some calcified nodes and we just asked our pulmonologist friend and he said, oh, there is nothing suggestive of TB, no need to give anti-TB drugs. We said, okay. So we gave with the steroid, and sure enough, you can see between July and November, patient responded very well, TB not required. However, this is one year later. Patient comes back to us with this kind of a granuloma. At this time, again, we give steroids because we were foolish, maybe. So gets good response at six weeks, fair enough. It's not TB, it's some kind of choroiditis which is recurring. But again, the patient comes back eight months later and with huge.